Hi, I'm Jason Taco, and welcome to my YouTube channel if you're new. If you are new, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. It's a uh, late afternoon, getting to be early evening, and I'm in a fairly dark area. This is going to be a challenging painting just because I'm not going to be able to see this very well. Not much I can do about it, but I want to paint this scene here, these hills in evening light. I have two challenges. It's uh, evening, or it's getting toward evening, so the light's going to change very fast. And I can't see what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> so I don't advise that you paint under these circumstances, if you're newer especially, but um, sometimes, you know, we just don't have much choice. If we choose a subject, I should have maybe chose something else. But let's see if we can make this interesting. I have some sunlight, as you can see, streaking across the canvas. Also not very advisable. But so be it. It is what it is. The challenge when you're doing a scene like this where you can't see very well is, you know, it's very dark here on my canvas. And when I look out at the landscape, it's very bright. Uh, it's kind of similar to when you paint nocturnes. I've done some nocturnes over the years and not a lot because the biggest challenge with them is kind of the reverse. You look out your scene, it's really dark, but then you're wearing some kind of headlamp or something so that you can see your canvas and your palette. And that can throw you off. So I'm going to do some uh, changes, some modifications to try to make this seem more interesting. It can happen a lot of times when you're doing a situation like this is that you'll start to paint lighter in value than what the scene actually is. Let's switch to a bigger brush. Can't remember if I said uh, like and subscribe if you could. Keep the algorithms happy. And what I do is I do the first so many minutes for the public and then I switch to um, Patreon only for the rest of it for my Patreon supporters. If you want to be a Patreon supporter to see this video and some of my other videos in their entirety click on the link below five dollars a month you can watch my full-length videos without commercial interruptions okay even though i can't see that well i know that's going to be too brown I think what I'm going to do is there's this one tree here. I'm going to scoot that over. So that we're kind of framing the background hill there. I think that'll make for a more interesting composition. I 
I should have just went further down. I'm getting some sunlight there on my palette. Okay, I just had the switch. I just could not see anything. And when I looked at the image on the screen and the camera, it was just way too dark. You guys wouldn't see anything either. So I just turned my easel around so that we're getting some of that light here, which means that when I paint, I have to turn almost completely around just to see the scene. But that's just the way it is. So I have a pretty, I think a pretty interesting composition here. Notice how I'm just blocking in these darks to uh, get this. Somebody out there is shooting a gun. Hope they don't get too close. Don't know what the heck they're shooting at. By the way, I didn't say this just because of the Conund conundrum I was dealing with earlier. That's the proper term. Colors on my palette, titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange, Indian yellow. I'm trying Indian yellow out here because it's going to get more towards sunset. We're gonna get some more intense oranges and I wanna try this for intensity. Yellow ochre, uh, transparent red oxide, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and viridium, which is quickly being um, diminished here. All right, so let's clean this palette off just a little bit. Now let's get in that ground plane. See that Indian yellow, it really creates quite an intensity that's unique. Um, most of the time when you add, you know, when you add white to yellow or cadmium yellow or cadmium orange or something like that, the white will um, diminish the intensity of those colors. But Indian yellow, it doesn't happen to that. It actually kind of reestablishes the intensity. I'm painting a uh, very small, this is probably about a six by eight, roughly. And if you watched my videos before, you know the reason why. When you're up against a clock like this, it's a lot quicker and easier to fill up the canvas, capture those relationships. If you're painting small versus trying to do some mural out here and you can't even get things covered before the sun goes down. See almost a bit of cool red in here. So keying things in first, getting some colors and values established, especially in my foreground. Not worrying right now about um, detail and things like that and fixing little things up. I'm out of Viridian. I should stop and replenish it and I probably will soon. But I'm going to try to make do. This tree here, the main tree, is a bit cooler 
a little more neutral too. And I turn around and look at it, let's add some red to that. Not bad. It's not exact, but we don't need to get exact yet. Okay, the background, let's get in the darks there. Cooler as to be expected. Rules of aerial perspective, or the principle of aerial perspective is things tend to cool as they go further back. Cool and lighten. Actually, I think I'm going to have to get some more Viridian in there. Let's throw in a bit of yellow. Now, if you're more of a beginner, first of all, I want to welcome you and encourage you to keep going, keep painting. Um, you're probably wondering, you know, why is he grabbing this color and that color? He, he put like five colors in there. Um, primary reason why is I'm just trying to tone things down and achieve a result of you know, whether I want things more neutral, whether I want them more intense, so on and so forth. So it's not so much a question of magical color formula. It's just, do I want to go warmer, cooler, lighter, darker? And certain colors will achieve that a little better than others. So you, you're almost kind of like doing a testing you know, like put a little bit of that in there. It's not quite doing it. Let's try this, so on and so forth. Let's get those highlights back there, at least a brief indication of them. Okay, we need to recede. those grasses more, that ground plane. Now, right here is a ground plane that's further away. All right, so you need to cool that, neutralize it, lighten it a bit. The big key is to um, don't look at this, don't isolate it from everything else. Put that in there. You see how I'm adding cooler colors to try to neutralize that. But in order to get the effect I want, when you're looking out there, make sure that you compare this to this, all right? That's gonna tell you if you're more on the mark. And the big thing you wanna do is just make this appear further away than that. You don't have to match the color exactly. You just have to get the effect of depth and distance. Okay, so I'm going to switch to um, my Patreon-only group. Like I said, if you want to become a member, hit the subscribe button. Oh, wow, somebody's parasailing out there. That's interesting. Maybe I can paint that in. Um, click on the link below, become a Patreon supporter. You can watch me finish this and watch all my other, um, or my other newer videos, too, for Patreon members only. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button, and we'll see you again.